You're listening to The Practical Vegan Mom. That's me, Jessica Jarmer. Today I'm going to talk to you about kitchen appliances, which is really one of my favorite subjects. I absolutely love kitchen appliances. I do. I don't know why. I remember a friend getting a new blender and I was more excited for her than I was when she told me she was pregnant. I know it's a problem, isn't it? Anyway, um, I don't think she noticed, but I realized after the fact. So I'm just going to go through the things that I have in my kitchen. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need them. These are things that I have found helpful uh, through the years and I absolutely adore it. If I give something a place on my counter, that means it is a place of honor and I absolutely, absolutely love it. Do you absolutely, absolutely need it? Probably not. Keep that in mind. I have a lot of counter space and every time um, I want to upgrade an appliance, it's it's a big decision as to where it's going to go. Okay. So first and foremost, I am going to talk to you about my newest appliance, which I thought was going to be a huge fight in the house. I was having a really bad day. And you know, some people go get their nails done. I don't do that. I went and bought a air fryer, but I bought the Breville air fryer and it is the Mac Daddy air fryer and it's expensive. This is why, you know, there was the fear of this is going to cause a fight. It cost about $400. And I did one of those order online and pick up in store things. So I actually got it at Williams Sonoma because I was looking at Bed Bath and Beyond. And I'm sure you're all like, you know, you should have gotten it there with your 20% off. But, you know, there was exclusions and the Breville, um, anything Breville was excluded, which stunk. Anyway. So I wound up getting it at Williams Sonoma and I was sitting at my daughter's basketball game and I thought, okay, I'm going to leave from here and pick this up. And then I realized how big this thing was going to be. And I wasn't really thinking this was kind of like an impulse buy, right? Cause I was really angry and I had a panic moment. I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So I called my boys who are at home and I said, do me a favor. Where's dad? And they said he was out. So I was like, sweet, get rid of the toaster and get rid of the juicer. And they said, get rid of the toaster and juicer. I said, well, the toaster some was done. It's kind of broken. And the juicer, let's call time of death on that. We really don't use it. And truthfully, it's not a, you know, it doesn't create whole foods. It doesn't promote whole foods eating. It's, you know, isolates the juice. So just get rid of it. So they put him in the basement. I raced my daughter off the basketball court because that's where she was. And uh, we raced to the store. I picked it up. You know, the woman actually walked it out to the car for me and said, congratulations, which I knew. I'm like, all right, well, this is, this means this is a good appliance. I get it home. I put it out on the counter. It did take up the space of two appliances, but it was totally, totally worth it. And I immediately cooked something in it so my husband couldn't get me to return it. That's, that's what I do. Um, anyway, so it air fries, it toasts, it broils, it slow cooks. How cool is that, that it slow cooks too? You could put a oven safe pot in there with a lid and it will slow cook your meal. That's if you don't have a slow cooker, which if any of you are married out there, you probably got one at your bridal shower. That's okay. We all love slow cookers anyway, but this thing can slow cook. It also proofs dough, which if I ever get into bread making, which I can see possibly in my near future, that'll be a cool feature too. But, you know, my kids are interested in the fact that it air fries without any oil. They like that. And they keep experimenting on things that they can see if they can air fry. And it toasts, which is just like, it, it's what we need to be done. And with my kids, when you're toasting something, because there's three of them and they each want two slices of something, you need six slices in there and it easily accommodates six slices. The next thing I have on my counter is a pressure cooker. I used to use my pressure cooker on my stove, but uh, when the kids were little, I just, you know, even though modern day pressure cookers don't explode, I still was a little panicky about it. Uh, So when Cuisinart came out with a electric pressure cooker, I bought it and it sits on my counter. I use it primarily for beans. There are other things I think to pressure cook in it, but it's prim- you know primarily for beans. Does everybody need that on their counter? Probably not, but I do. Anyway, it also, from what I'm gathering from this Instapot stuff, it acts like that. 
it's, I think it was like the original one. It sears, it does all the other stuff that that Instapot does. Um, so maybe I should be looking at those kind of recipes and expand my horizons past beans. And it would really justify its place on the counter, right? Anyway, moving on, I have two different blenders on my countertop. I know you think that's a little nuts, but I'll tell you what. I have a Vitamix on there because I absolutely, you know, decided that I needed a Vitamix. And I don't regret my purchase because before I got my other blender, I used my Vitamix probably five times a day. But now I only use it for large volume things. Um, the other one I have is a Magic Bullet or a Nutribullet, I think they're called now. My dad, he's, you know, was a big, big fan of um, infomercials. <laughs> so when David Wolf came out with the Nutribullet commercials, uh, he told me about this amazing guy who eats all his vegetables in the juice form and had I ever heard of it, which I looked at him like he had 10 heads, but that's okay. Of course I had heard um, I was practicing that kind of lifestyle at home, but that's okay. So we wound up getting one because my dad bought the two for one, you know, just pay shipping. And I argued and I argued, but I really have to say, I do not regret it at all. I absolutely love this Nutribullet. I use it all the time. I make cashew cream in it probably daily. I make sour cream. Anytime that something calls for, um, you know, soaking cashews to use them in a recipe, I don't even bother soaking them because first off, I don't plan ahead that well. And secondly, the blender takes care of it. So if you're someone who's not looking to spend, you know, $500 on a blender, look at the Nutribullet. It's a really, really good alternative to, um, to an expensive blender. I don't know how long it lasts, but mine's lasted a pretty long time. Okay. So moving on through my kitchen, I have, and you really don't need this. You don't need this, but I love this. I have one of the Breville um, frothers, and I definitely bought that on sale somewhere, I want to say online. Do I need it? I probably don't need it, but I absolutely love it because it makes my coffee in the morning. Like, like I went through the line at Starbucks and I use Oatly in it. And if you haven't used Oatly, and, and if you are lucky enough to be able to find Oatly and it's not sold out somewhere, buy that and put it in a frother. Oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. It really is like a frothy Starbucks thing now. It's just unbelievable. Another appliance I have on my counter, and I don't even know where you're going to find this because I don't know that they make it anymore. Uh, so, but if you can find it, then that's wonderful. If you are a tea person, and I was a crazy tea person, crazy, because, you know, I just don't get into things a little bit. I get into things, you know, all in. So I had, you know, the tea thermometers and I had... um timers and measuring. La, la, la. I had all this crap for making tea. I still have it, I'm sure, in the back of a cabinet somewhere. But then I found this device. It looks like a Mr. Coffee coffee maker, and it's specifically for tea. I don't know if you know this, but if you leave tea, first off, if you get tea to the wrong temperature for the wrong type of tea you're using, it'll taste bitter. If you leave it in too long to steep, it'll taste bitter. So if you ever had like a, you know, one of those things where you soak your tea in the um, tea, you know, or you leave the tea bag in and then you have a sip and as you go on, it gets bitter because you're not really supposed to leave it in that long. And that's where this device comes in. It's called Trina Tea, T-E-A at the end. And it's made by Adagio Tea. And I believe they are in Garfield, New Jersey. If they still make this device, I recommend buying it if you're a tea person. Anyway, um, the beauty of this device is you set the temperature based on the type of tea you're having, and they only give you two options. So are you having herbal tea are you and green tea, or are you having black tea? So you look and you make your decision, and then what you do is you adjust the temperature button, you know, setting one or setting two, and then you put your tea in and the water in the top, and you put the steep time. So usually with the teas I've been drinking lately, it's about five minutes. I've been drinking a lot of herbal teas lately. So I set it to five minutes 
and you just turn it on. And I hate to say set it and forget it, you know, Ron Popeil, but set it and forget it literally. So the beauty of this thing, it gets the temperature up to the right temp or the water up to the right temperature. Then it drops it into the bin where it steeps for the amount of time that you set it for. And then it pours it into a coffee pot that is on a heater like your old Mr. Coffee. And it's fabulous because you could have hot tea all day. You only worry about steeping and doing that whole thing once. And you don't have to worry about it getting bitter because it's kept separate from the actual tea that it's steeped in. Isn't that awesome? It's totally awesome. Okay, I think that covers my counter top. I probably should go over and look, but I'm attached to a headset that is attached to my computer. So I'm not doing that. Okay. So the only other thing I can think of that is probably, oh my gosh, I did forget something. I forgot my food processor. <gasps> I don't know how I could have done that. I feel like I was cheating on it. Oh, I feel awful. I love my food processor that I use every single day, every single day. I use my food processor and it takes up so much space in my dishwasher. It's such a pain for my kids when they empty the dishwasher. Anyway, um, but I use that every single day. Everybody needs one. One of my biggest regrets when I registered for my wedding was, of course, I didn't realize it at the time, was I registered for a seven cup food processor. What the hell is that? Seven cup. Did nothing. Like, I don't even think I could get a whole recipe of hummus done in it. It was, I think it was just counter decoration. I was so mad at myself for a seven cup. I, I don't even know what I was thinking. So that, you know, of course I had a reaction to that. And what was my reaction? I went out and bought the 14 cup. Eh, it's gigantic, but totally worth it. I shred things in it. I chop things in it. I blend things in it. And it is by Cuisinart. I don't know if there's other companies out there who make a food processor, but if you're buying, I, I think it's almost like Band-Aid is synonymous with adhesive bandage. Everybody says Band-Aid. When you want a food processor, a lot of people say, I'm going to get a Cuisinart, you know, get a Cuisinart because that's just the one that you always think of. So that is a big appliance. If we went into my drawers, you know, you would find the basic things. You'd find the hand mixer, which I use probably three times a year. And every time I use it, I'm grateful I have it. Oh, underneath one of my counters, you know, in this pop-up cool drawer I have is my KitchenAid stand mixer, which I got when I was 21 years old. You know, everybody else was asking for like other things. I asked for a KitchenAid hand, you know, stand mixer. And yes, I have almost every single attachment, including the sausage stuffer, because I was convinced I was one day going to be stuffing vegan sausage. So yes, I have that too. I have the vegetable slicer for it. I have the vegetable sheet slicer, which is freaking fabulous. It takes like zucchini, butternut squash, and you put it in and it makes sheets out of it. No joke, sheets. So you can make like really cool gratins. You could make um, butternut squash lasagna. You could do all this stuff. I have that too. Yeah, I told you, I have a problem with kitchen appliances and devices. I have to buy them. Um, but my last thing I would say that you absolutely, and this one I would say you would need it because if not, some recipes just don't pan out. Get yourself a nice immersion blender. One of those that you actually stick in the pot, press the button, and it goes on. You know, and it like just, you hold it and you move it around the pot and it chops up everything and purees it. That I would absolutely recommend. I remember one time watching Alton Brown slice a uh, Frisbee to put around the immersion blender so that when he went around, it was kind of like a splash guard. And I thought it was hilarious. However, I have been splashed numerous times and have actually thought about taking a Frisbee and doing what he did. The man's a genius. Anyway, that would just be the last one, the immersion blender. I absolutely love it. I'm sure if I opened up my drawers, I would have more things to talk about I because I literally, literally have a problem. But buy whatever device works for you. And let me tell you, these things, just make sure they do more than one thing. You know, uh, make sure that, you know, like my Breville air fryer, which could have caused a huge fight in my house, is also my toaster. So thank you, Lord. Um, so that worked out. You know, the... 
Cuisinart thing uh, for the pressure cooker is now, you know, I, I could use it for other things. I don't, but I could use it for other things. So that justifies its space. Um, the blenders, I, I, you know, I use them all the time. So make sure the things that you put on your counter are really important to you and are things you really need. And if you feel like, you know, messaging me because you bought um, an appliance and everybody in your family hates you because <laughs> it takes up the whole counter, feel free to message me because um, I, I will have your back on that. I think that that is a wonderful, wonderful thing when you bring something new into the kitchen. So until next time, my friends, stay healthy and enjoy your kitchen with all its gadgets. <laughs>